Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you how to move your custom domains DNS management to LightCell DNS or to AWS Route 53 service. This is useful if you make use of AWS services a lot for your website hosting or for, your, or for running servers on AWS or for running the email service on AWS. Another use case could be that your domain registrar, where you purchased your domain, they don't provide DNS management capabilities. And another use case could be that uh, the DNS management capabilities is not within your control. If you want to make any changes to the DNS records, then you have to uh, submit a ticket or request for them to change it. But, so if you want more control and uh, more flexibility, then that's another reason to move your DNS management to either LightCell DNS or to Route 53. So let's take a look at those in this video and uh, show you how to set them up. Okay, so let's first look at LightCell DNS and then I'll show you the same setup on Route 53 DNS. So inside the LightCell dashboard um, or LightCell console, so if you are on your dashboard, you would go over to networking, then click on DNS zone. And then we are creating a DNS zone for your domain. So let's go ahead and type in the domain that you want to uh, move over the DNS management capabilities over to um, LightCell. So for me, I'm going to use web hosting for, I do have it right here, um, web hosting for beginners.site. So that's a domain that I have. Uh, so I'll just use that for my um, tutorial here for beginners.site. So you'll want to type in your domain here. You don't need to put the www in front here. And then if you want to identify your DNS zone by tags or values, key values, then you can set those up here. We won't need to do that. All you do is create DNS zone. So once you do that, the resulting page will show you the name servers that you need to set at your domain registrar for LightCell to be able to manage DNS for that domain. At this point, you, if your domain is brand new, which means that um, you don't have any services on that running on that domain. So if you don't have a website or if you don't have email set up for it, if, if it's just basically brand new, you've not used it for anything yet, then you'll just simply update the name servers at your D, uh, domain registrar with the ones that are provided right here. However, if you do have production level services running, email, website, FTP, or anything else, then you don't want to update the name servers just yet. Uh, what you want to do is, um, so at your domain registrar's uh, page, you'll want to go over to your DNS management, and that will be here, and again, for my tutorial, I'm using a domain that I just registered, and so I don't have anything running for it. But you'll typically have an A record that's pointing to an IP address for your website, let's say LightCell instance. You might have an MX record that is uh, for your email services. You may also have some CNAME records that point to other services, or you may have a CNAME record for your www your domain, and that's pointing to your website as well. So you may have certain records already created if you have an existing uh, domain. In that case, what you want to do is copy each of these records and recreate them inside the LightCell DNS. So the way to do that here is once you've set up the zone for your domain, uh, you'll start creating those records. So you can come here, add a record, Click A if it's a website um, IP address. Click on CNAME if you're creating a record for CNAME and uh, MX or any other records. You might have TXT records, you might have CNAME records uh, for any kind of validation or verification. Uh, so you, any records that you currently have in your existing DNS zone, you want to move that over. Before you update the name servers, 
on uh, at your DNS registrar. My domain is brand new. I don't need to worry about any kind of DNS records just yet. So I'll cancel that. And then these are the domains that I need to keep track of. So let me just um, go over to my domain registrar, um, head back over to manage name servers. And then here, or as you'll see, the default name servers are set up. When you when I register domains on name.com, they automatically just assign their services as the name server. So what you'll do is just delete all of them. Um, and again, that there probably is a way to do that for your domain registrar. If you do not, if you don't have access to this kind of setup and you have to put in a request, then what you'll want to do is just send the request to whoever is hosting your domain's DNS and tell them that you want the name servers to be pointed to these four values. So we'll, we'll start setting this up. So I'll copy this one. So now once you have all of them in, hit save changes, or again, whatever that is for your DNS registrar, or domain registrar setup. So now this is done. Now typically this does take some time. Documentation for name.com, they say it could take up to 24 hours for this to change. So uh, one of the tools that I like to use is redirect checker. Um, sorry, not redirect checker, DNS checker. Uh, Redirect Checker is another tool I use, but DNS Checker, you can type in your domain here, web hosting for beginners.site, and then you'll want to come here and select NS for name servers. So you'll want to check what the name servers are. And at this point, uh, the DNS systems all over the world are still using name.com as my name servers. Uh, so you'll wanna check this every now and then and until they start to show these values, domain is still resolving with your previous DNS registrar. So this will take some time. Typically, again, like I said, it could take up to 24 hours, uh, but um, it'll vary depending on your existing service. So come back here and check that. However, while, the, while that's going, you can start adding records here as well. So. If you wanted to add a record, CNAME records, TXT records, anything, you can just get everything set up so that when the DNS is moved, your DNS zone is ready to serve any kind of request that's coming in. And so that's how you set up LightCell DNS for your custom domain. Now let's take a look at how to do the same setup for um, Route 53. Um, you can just go to AWS. Uh, Amazon.com, or if you're inside LightCell, just click on AWS, and that'll take you to the AWS Management Console. Either search for Route 53, or if you've used it recently, it will show up in this recently visited services. So you can just click on Route 53 here. And the what from what I understand, the main differences between Route 53 and LightCell DNS is that Route 53 is more robust and it provides uh, additional services that you might need in case you have a complex setup. As you'll see up here, it, it uh, provides traffic management, availability monitoring, and several other things. So I think it, it is more for uh, complex setups or, or more sophisticated setups. But let's say you want to use Route 53. So what you do here is create a hosted zone. And for this, I will use a domain. Um, let me see if I can do the same one. Web hosting for beginners.site. So type in your domain name. You'll want a public hosted zone. And again, you can give it tags or anything else that you want to identify this domain with just for organization purposes. Otherwise, click on create a DNS zone. So what that will do is give you the same four um, name server host names to update your name server with. So what I would do here is now click on, uh, select all, each of these, come on over to my name servers and delete, uh, you know, I'll get rid of these and then add those as uh, replacement values. Once you've done that, you can now start to create 
uh, a record. One of the things that this does provide here is you can import a zone file. So if you do have an existing domain uh, that you have services already running, email, website, FTP, or anything uh, already existing and that you don't want to disrupt, what you can do is export the zone file from the current DNS management, or if you don't have access to export it, you can ask the domain registrar to export you the zone file, and you can come in here and import it, and you can import all of those items. Otherwise, you can just start creating uh, DNS records in, through this interface. So what you could do here is, uh, what I did was click on create record, come over here. This will tell you what kind of record you want to create. Again, if you have a sophisticated setup, you might use some of these other um, services, but for us, it'll always be simple routing. Click on next. And then here you can start to create your record. So you can say, you know, I want a www. Um, C name, and that could head on, you know, point to your root record, or you may come here and hit A, and then send it to an IP address, uh, and then just type in the IP address. There are some other options here. You can send it to a CloudFront distribution. You can send it to an S3 website endpoint. Um, so you get this advantage if you are using a lot of AWS services. They can configure everything just by you selecting the services that you're currently using in AWS. You still need to update the name servers at your domain registrar for these records to become effective. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's about it. I just wanted to quickly show you two ways to set up DNS management within the AWS infrastructure. One is through the light cell DNS. The other one was through Route 53. I have received, I want to say, a couple of questions or a few questions around how to do this. So I figured this is a quick and easy way to get a video out. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just uh, provide them in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions for any future videos, please provide them in the comments and suggestions below as well. Um, and until the next video, take care.